All right, we finally got our uh, wheat harvest wrapped up. All the double crop beans uh, planted and sprayed everything. So now it's time to finish up this planting season, get a replant done so we can get that sucker cleaned up and in the shed because I'm tired of looking at it this year. So. <laughs> Anyway, we're starting out here on the new farm, uh, cell phone tower farm. And uh, we didn't ride over here the other day to look at this stand, but I know out here in uh, some of this real thick grass, we kind of got some uh, thin stands. So we're going to drop in there and replant some spots. But I mean, overall, you know, this farm looks a lot better than what it did uh, a couple months ago. Now we done sprayed it twice, but it's starting to get pretty weedy again. All this old pasture uh, junk out here, pasture weeds and everything. And then we got a lot of Bermuda grass and everything. And as soon as Kelly and Andy get done spraying cotton, we're going to come over here and hit this stuff again. We're going to hit it with Liberty and Sequence. And hopefully that combination will get this thing about as clean as it's going to get this year. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, Y'all remember that excitement uh, we had in uh, one of our wheat harvest videos? That right there. Yep, that's where the fire was the uh, the other night when the uh, fire department called me, and I thought they said it was under the power lines. I thought it was this power lines going over here to the cell phone tower. I didn't realize it was the ones up under the uh, power lines on the road. And anyway, whenever we cleared out the entrance uh, right over there, this is where we stacked the debris. I gotta say, I'm not sorry. The fire started. It. Uh, really accelerated uh, getting rid of all that uh, junk however the downside is the heat was so bad it fried my beans right here in this uh, this little area but that's no big deal we'll drop in and replant this spot too i'm just glad it didn't get out the fire didn't get out there and all that sage grass otherwise this whole field would have been wiped out but anyway we're gonna get this farm done and move over to dunlap and bring you back then That old rough new farm finally got it done. Oh man, we got a lot more work to do on that farm. A lot of wet holes that we we need to fix. We'll, we'll worry out. We'll worry about that next year. We got it covered a second time. Now we're over on Dunlop where the those three corner alfalfa hoppers wore me up. Like right in this spot, it's not bad. But everything other than the test plots, you know, we're going in and we're uh, we're dropping some more seed in there because. You know, I've got to drive through the whole farm to uh, get to the bad spots. And, you know, because this isn't like, uh, you know, cotton where I can just drive down the rows and just drop the planter in where I needed to. You know, my tires are wide enough that they're going to do damage. Uh, so if my planter's not, uh, so, if, so if my planter's not in the ground dropping seed, you know, we're hurting the existing stand out here. So pretty much wherever, uh, the tractor and planter goes it needs to be down but because we're on rtk uh we can keep the existing sand out uh out here you know uh, i got my guidance line on here and i just shifted my guidance line over about nine inches to where my planter units are going right in the middle and uh, we're running over very little of the existing stand. Uh, basically, my tractor tires is the only thing uh, running over any soybeans because they're wide enough, but on the rest of the planter, all those units are going right uh, in between the old rows, so we're dropping plenty of seed, plus we're keeping what's already out here. 
you know i don't want to get rid of what's already out here because it was planted two months ago it's already starting to bloom uh today's the longest day of the year they started blooming them probably a week week and a half ago uh the plants that are out here have got maximum yield potential i don't want to get rid of them but if i could just fill in the thin spots uh, with an earlier maturing uh variety seed uh you know then that's about the only thing that's going to really help this uh, field get anywhere close to maximum yield potential all right we're getting pretty good uh, staying right here to the rest of the road so i'm going to turn around yeah, i'm going to leave some tire tracks here but really no point in planting all the way to the end if we don't need to but most everything off to our left over here is uh university and pioneer test lots uh, three corner alfalfa hoppers did a little bit of damage in there too not as much as mine because all of that seed was treated with an insecticide which helped although there are a few thin places i don't know if they're going to keep them for uh, full trials or not but uh, i'm not going to mess their trials up by planting a variety in there so out of this 43 acre farm we're probably going to be planting about uh, 32 acres or so out of it and then hopefully going forward, we'll have a pretty stand of beans. All right, day two, replanting. Uh, we got a good big cover yesterday. Uh, we got all of our uh, soybean that was originally soybean ground. We got it replanted. Now we're back on our cotton ground, replanting soybeans. We're planting this field for the third time. Third time's a charm, right? Gosh, I hope so. But I can guarantee you one thing. This field is not getting planted a fourth time. My plan, by the, by the time I figure out if I got a good stand on this or not, my planter's gonna be cleaned up and parked in the shed for the year, never to be brought back out until probably next February. I don't know if you can tell now, we're going through a decent patch of cotton here. Uh, Cotton don't look so high because we absolutely nuked it yesterday with our uh, soybean burn down mix. Uh, Paraquat, Metribuzin, and Fowler. Even, even then, some of that cotton is uh, looking a lot better than I thought it'd be after getting hit by that uh, Paraquat. Well guys, I want to thank you for being patient with me. I know y'all are tired of planting videos. Well guess what? I'm tired of planting. I'm tired of recording planting videos. I'm tired of making planting videos. I'm tired of editing planting videos. This has been probably the longest, most drawn out uh, planting season we've ever had. Yeah, there's been plenty of other years where we've had you know, issues planting. We've had to do some replanting. But very, very rarely do I have to plant a field for the third time. In fact, I can only think of one other time where that's actually happened. A year that started out with such great promise. You know, we had a dry spring. We was able to get a lot done. We was on time. We was on point. You know, we was able to get our soybeans planted early. We able to get our cotton planted early. We was able to get started planting cotton as early as I've ever planted. And then uh, that second week of May is and it was downhill for almost a solid month but hopefully things will uh, straighten back out here and we can still salvage a decent crop i don't think the i don't think there's any prospects of a record crop well if there is a record about the only thing we can make a record crop on now is probably double crop soybean they got still got full yield potential but cotton corn full season beans uh, they don't have full yield, yield potential at all all that rain just uh it either hurt the existing surviving crop or it killed it and we had to replant it just has it's been it's been the absolute planting season for hell but you know, compared to what a lot of what i've seen from a lot of other people especially guys you know uh, up north you know we've actually had it pretty good compared to a lot of other people so we really don't have much right to complain you know it's just the kind of stuff we deal with every year but that doesn't make it any less frustrating. I did a little bit of driving around uh, yesterday checking uh, some of my crops that I hadn't seen in a couple weeks. And uh, our corn crop is actually turned around uh, a little bit. It doesn't look quite as bad as it did 
four. Some of those are real wet places. They, they, they didn't drown out, but uh, you know, couldn't get any oxygen down to the roots, and they were just stunted and yellow and everything. Uh, it's actually green back up, started getting uh, some of that nitrogen in the plant, started growing. Now I got, uh, I definitely got fields that just look like this, where you got tall and short, and that short is definitely behind. But it is greening back up, so I mean, there's a real good chance it'll make something. Won't be full yield potential, but it ought to make something, and it doesn't look as bad as what it did before. So. Unfortunately, on that corn, that was on my better ground that had, had the highest yield potential, so we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, that's a that's one of the few things that we can't correct for. If uh, oxygen can't get to the roots, there ain't nothing we can do do about it except for pray, except pray for dry weather. There ain't nothing we can spray on it or uh, apply to it or anything to, to help it out. It's just got to dry out and get some oxygen to the roots. Yeah, our, our full season beans now, uh, I mean, they can do good. Uh, they do respectable. Uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see, I would hope they make at least 50 bushels an acre. Uh, you know, there's an outside chance that the weather falls right. You know, maybe they'll be up to around 60, but we're not gonna see the 80 bushel beans that we did last year. It's, it's just not gonna happen. Uh, you know, we've lost too much growing season, too much sunlight on full season beans for that to happen. As far as cotton goes, uh, I'm not going to say it's got full yield potential, but if the weather's right, it can do a lot of catching up, and it has a really great ability to compensate for adverse conditions early early on. So we can still see a really good cotton crop. Just don't think we're going to see as good a cotton crop as if we'd had a decent stretch of weather there in the middle of the lake. Maybe. But Kelly and Andy uh, out there today, they got started spraying the uh, cotton today. Spraying herbicides and uh, spraying our first round for plant bugs. At, le at, le at least on the older cotton. And then once they get to the replanting cotton, uh, we're actually going to be treating for thrips. Uh, even though it's been hot, fairly dry, uh, the cotton is showing signs of thrip damage. Even though it's like three, four leaf cotton, it'll probably grow out of it. Right now, even though it can't grow, grow out of it, what we're doing is losing time because it's slowing down the growth and the um, uh, development of that cotton crop. And with replanting cotton, that's the one thing we can't afford to have. So, uh, insecticide is uh, insecticide is cheap and ought to help that cotton really take off and start playing catch up. And with the temperatures we got coming up uh, that we've had this week and then coming up next week, I mean, we've seen a lot of highs around 97 degrees or so lows in the mid 70s uh, cotton ought to mature and start developing quickly not going to be good for the corn especially considering that a lot of it will start pollinating next week but it will be good for the cotton but anyway we got about 15 more acres of this and then uh we're not quite done planting yet though well i thought we was done planting but uh not quite done planting yet i did a little bit of miscalculating on how much seed we had left over from whenever we was uh, uh, planting double crop beans. Got about 15, 20 acres worth of seed and I can't return it because it's been treated with a, bio, with a biological. So I got to use it and rather than dumping it on the ground, uh, I called, uh, I called uh, my neighbor Mark Smith, uh, see, if I, see if he had any ground I could run it off on. And uh, he's, uh, he's behind he just got started planting soybeans and he's got quite a few acres over here he's like yeah please bring it over here and plant it out on my ground i'll be happy to have it so funny thing is is uh i used to farm this farm up until about uh i don't know five years ago i think yeah we farmed this farm from 2008 to i think i don't know 2019 uh, something like that right before i started doing youtube uh nice 380 acre farm uh, this was actually the best ground that i had and uh anyway it was a shame I, it was a shame i lost it but the uh landowner uh he decided he wanted to get back in farming so naturally he's going to farm his own farm again so not gonna lie it's painful losing it but i understand it and we're still good good friends still help each other out 
when they do uh, he's actually the one i buy my steers from every year don't know if you can see him but he's off in the distance uh planting uh, that field over there so anyway we're going to uh plant until we get all the seed run out of our planter and are you finally done with planting then matt no we're not quite done with planting yet but i'll explain that whenever we get to the next field Yep, that's right. Way back to planting uh, double crop soybeans. But these ain't my beans, thank goodness. Now, my neighbor Jordan East, you know, you heard me talk about them on uh, our channel time to time. You know, we've done a lot of helping each other out. Well, here lately, he's done a whole lot more helping me out than I've had a chance to help him out. So, anyway, they've had a good run of bad luck a, 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 you know pretty much typical days for us just everything going wrong not able to get anything done he's had to do tons and tons of replanting of course he farms a lot more acres than what i do and anyway they just finally got their wheat cut and he's uh probably several hundred acres behind on getting soybeans planted behind them so we done with ours and i pretty much didn't give them the option I'm mean, like where's your seed tender going to be and what field you want me to start in so we still got uh you know we still got to replant our corn maize but you know what that can wait you know while our uh, planter set up for soybeans and we're right here in this area we're going to knock in here and jump we're going to jump in here and see how many acres we can get done uh, I, my planter's fully loaded up so you know i've got enough for at least probably around 60 acres maybe 65 acres just depending on what the seed size is so we're at least going to do that and if it's uh you know still early enough in the day we got the seed tender over here we'll load up a little bit more seed and try and get as much uh, done for him today as we can and he's he was telling me uh everything that's happened today and literally whatever can go wrong has go wrong for instance that seed tender right there it's a it's a it's a triaxle seed tender but it's only riding on five tires i had a blowout on this this morning i think they had a, a fan motor go out on their planter this morning uh had problems with uh semi trucks getting getting wheat hauled off uh, breakdowns on them uh it's all sorts of stuff so he's been uh, he's been more than gracious enough to uh, help us out in the past uh like the, this the track and bulldozer i use this spring you know he uh you know it, it was his and he would not let me pay him a dime for it so so we got the opportunity we just trying to help him out and just try to just try to pay him back a little bit for all the favors he's he's done for us and i ain't gonna lie this is kind of a break for me too you know working for somebody else you know just doing what they asked me to do it's just like it's like a vacation to me i'm not having to make any decisions i'm just having to do the job and once you take the decision making process out of everything and you, all you gotta do is work for me that's a whole lot more enjoyable unfortunately there's still decision making going on right now because uh kelly and Annie just called me about a, about an hour ago they got to the farthest farm away from the shop spraying cotton busted a freaking hydraulic line on the sprayer one of those it's hard to get to it's saturday Pretty much everybody, every place closes at noon. And I found one place that closes at like three o'clock, but there was no way we could get the hose to them by three o'clock. So I had to call the owner, see if they'd wait around a little while longer. And I haven't heard anything out of Kelly or Andy, so maybe that's good news. I was able to get the hose off, no problem. Get it over there and get it made. But I know they're not having the best luck, and today's not a great day to be fixing a hydraulic hose underneath the sprayer far away from the shop. It's like. 97 degrees outside i know it's gonna be hot up under that sprayer but i wish i wish i could do something to help them but i'm halfway across the county here in the tractor got no way to get to them so i got faith that they'll be able to take care of the problem and get it solved well guys that's it for planting this year well at least all i want to show on video we still got the corn maze to replant but that's only seven acres and i'm pretty sure y'all sick and tired of seeing this planter behind me so we'll just go ahead and end this video here but had a heck of a day running we got about 130 acres planted for jordan today and then uh got uh got about 25 of my own replanted done and then got about another 22 acres done running out the seed on on my neighbor's farm so 
So, so in total we cover about 175 acres a day. Dang big day. Of course, you can get that done with this planter when you don't have breakdowns all the time and you're not having to manage a bunch of other situations going on. Uh, Kelly and Andy spray cotton all day today until they uh, until a hose on the sprayer busted about the middle of the afternoon. And it, but anyway, they was able to handle all that, uh, get the sprayer back up and running. Didn't quite get done. Uh, didn't quite get sprayed what I wanted to today. But hey, it'll be there on Monday. So now that all the planting's done. Uh, it's gonna be the season of spray, 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 spray. <clears throat> so anyway, guys, I uh, hope y'all and. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I uh, don't really know what the next thing I'm gonna film is, but uh, you can be assured I'm gonna be out with something in three to four days. So, so guys, appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next one.